Chinese spy balloon that's been discovered floating over the United States. We have some analysis on the programme. I'm very pleased to be joined by Nicolas Eftibiatis, who's live in Washington. He's a former intelligence officer who focused on Chinese spying, and he's also the author of the book Chinese Espionage and Oper Operations and Tactics. It's good to have you with us on the programme, sir. Just tell us what it is that you've made of this story. Well, right now we still don't have enough information to make a, a, certainly a judgment, and there are a lot of questions. How did the U.S. know it was a Chinese balloon from a start? Uh, it just came in over the Aleutian Islands. Uh, how was it? Has it been transmitting back to China, indicating that it's controlled? Uh, and if so, you know, what's the purpose of hovering? This could be anything from a test to uh, determine U.S. defenses tests to explore biological weapons deployments or actual reconnaissance hovering over an area just to uh, maintain static reconnaissance over one area or deploying uh, sensor systems. That's another possibility done through with balloons, uh, you know, deploying small sensor systems that uh, that can go into a target area that might not be physically accessible to a human on the ground. So a lot of possibilities, very few answers at this point. And we're not going to know unless the U.S. brings the balloon down and sees what the sensor package is on it. Well, do you think it will bring the balloon down, though? Because it had been reported earlier that fighter jets were ready to do so, but that President Biden had been advised against it because of possible falling debris. Yeah, I, 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 I've seen these things there <laughs> uh, all the time. You can poke a few holes in it, and there's not going to be a lot of debris, particularly over a... Um, uh, uninhabited areas, such as in Montana, sparsely inhabited areas. So it's not like it's going to come crashing down. It'll just lose altitude, uh, you know, provided they don't put a missile in the sensor package. So I don't know. I don't know if it's in the U.S. interest. It's going to be a very public thing if it comes down. Uh, and there's going to be a lot of politics surrounding that. So they may not bring it down, actually, for that reason alone. Um, uh, but we'll see. And as we're talking, sir, the Pentagon is issuing a statement. They're saying the balloon is moving eastward at the moment and is currently over the centre of the United States. China, meanwhile, has said, look, this is for weather purposes and it got blown off course. Do you think there's likely to be any truth to that? I, I think it's um, a remote possibility. I mean, the United States alone launches 1,800 weather balloons a day worldwide, right? That's a lot of weather balloons. Um, could it have blown off course? Yes, absolutely. Could it have station kept on top of a city for three days? No, not at all. So um, so it depends. What? Uh, and again, unless you go on board and see if there's a transmitter, you know, bringing that information up to China's satellites and such, and unless you see if there's a collection, a suite of sensors on board, you're, we're really not going to have any answers. China has, at this point, plausible deniability. I just want to bring you a bit more from that Pentagon statement that we're getting right now. The Pentagon saying the balloon has changed course, and that's why we're monitoring it. Does that sound to you... Additionally concerning, what do you make of that? Um, well, you know, typically for a target set, you can raise or lower the altitude, and that puts you in different jet streams, and that lets you station keep in some areas and then move quickly in others. So, um, uh, you know, it is uh, in a very, very gross sense, you can uh, adjust track and direction for where it goes. Uh, I would estimate it'll head towards the East Coast, and China will probably dump it somewhere in the Atlantic. Uh, unless the U.S. brings it down before that. Did China not fear it might get caught doing this, though? Actually, I, that's a really interesting thing with China. They have a tendency of um, of uh, sort of trying to poke people in the eye before events, like just, sh just to show their strength. I think they did it with the former SecDef that they flew the J-20. You know, it's inaugural flight over when he was visiting Beijing. I think... Um, Sorry about that. I think, uh, you know, they have a tendency of wanting to show their strength. So it might be that as well. There's a big psychological dimension in that. A psychological dimension. I mean, just can you tell us a bit more by what, what you mean by that? I mean, what is it that you think the Chinese are trying to achieve if this is a surveillance balloon? Yeah, well, I, I think, I mean, there are a number of, of ways this could be. Number one, they could be testing U.S. reactions, right? Uh, testing if it's radar detectable. Some materials are not. Uh, so they could be testing what the U.S. defense strategy. They could be uh, aware of some specific type of testings that, is, that are going on 
and um, trying to uh, shut down those testings, right? If you put a balloon over a certain space, the United States is doing exactly what it said it was going to do, which is sort of clamming up, not doing anything. Uh, so you, you tend to stop military operations behavior uh, in that way. So those are the real reasons you would do something like that. On a note of, um, uh, on a note of, I'm sorry, someone keeps uh, That's falling. all right, sir. Let me ask you just one final question. It's important to get your expertise on this and then we will uh, let you go. Has China done something like this before, do you think, over the United States? Um, I think they have. I think uh, the U.S. is very, very aware of balloon testing uh, just for the threat of terrorism and such to de deploy biological agents, that type of thing. So uh, the U.S. is very, very uh, um, cognizant and defensive against that. And I believe they have on several occasions before done some. And in fact, this was between China and Taiwan. They did this to each other for decades, decades upon decades. North, uh, South Korea does it with North Korea. And it's done by everyone from civilians to, uh, to governments. So it's a pretty uh, tried and true practice. All right. Well, we'll see what happens in the next couple of hours and days. Nicholas Eftimiatis, thanks very much indeed for your time today on France 24. Thank you very much for having me.